So the issue of accountability, the president, is, you don't know what it means. This is a, histo this is a president. Mm. So for now, the incumbency factor in our, pre in our political um, space has been demystified. That if you like, you're a president with 10 presidential jets, have access to the security, have access to the army and navy. They have been stripped naked. That it is possible for Nigerians to withdraw their letter of employment. They have just done it in this election. It sends a signal to even whosoever is going to take over. Mm. So say, you need to use these four years to hit the ground running. Because Nigerians are becoming impatient. Mm. Somebody said, I was, I was discussing with somebody and I said, you, you don't seem to understand because we're debating about who is going to win this election. I said, let me tell you, for those of you for those of you who say Jonathan has done very well and all this, I say I'm going to give you an analogy. We are just like people on an expressway. And you have a fast lane, you have a slow lane. And somebody is driving at 20 kilometers per second and is occupying the fast lane. And somebody is in a hurry for a meeting or is hungry to get to a restaurant to eat and you are blocking his way. He has a right to horn and say, excuse me, or even bring out his hand and say, Oga, if you are not going anywhere, please leave the road. Of course, the man that is traveling at 20 kilometers is also moving. Mm. But the man okay. at the back is simply saying, your pace is too, slow, is too slow for me. Get out of the way. Let me, if I have the energy to fly, why should I be running? If I have the ability to run, why should I be walking? Crawling. If I have the ability to walk, why should I be crawling? Mm. So Nigerians are simply impatient. The hunger is becoming much. People are asking for facilities for education. Mm. And it seems the government is too slow. That's why they just decided to say, please, excuse me, let's bring another CEO. Mm. So that CEO should also remember that the same people that signed the letter of employment and termination of this outgoing government, they still have their bylaw intact mm. and will be waiting for the performance of this government. Mm. Yes, even before the uh, election result was declared, the international community um, uh, accepted that the election was free and fair. Now, uh, in history, we have June 12 as uh, the election that was that we still talk about as being the freest, One of the freest. and the fairest election so far in Nigeria. Now, if we compare June 12 to what we had now, would you say this election has superseded um, that one? June 12th election was a historical watershed mm. that should have altered the trajectory of our political journey forever and forever. Because that election actually put paid to the issue of religious sentiment in this nation. That was an election that two Muslim candidates mm came out in a volatile religious environment like Nigeria. And for the first time, we, Nigerians closed their eye to the fact that we have two Muslim candidates. They were simply looking for the best pilots mm. to take us. M most times, I've never seen where any Nigerian traveling will knock at any aircraft's cockpit to find out the pilots and the co-pilots, whether they are from his village or they attend his church, most times what they are after is that how safe is the airline? How competent is the pilot? Is the pilot or are the pilots? Most times, I've never seen any Nigerian, especially the political class, whether flying by Arik or by Aero or by Medview or by any of the knocking at the cockpit and say, "Excuse me, I'm going to Abuja, but I want to find out whether the pilot and the co-pilots are from my village." Everybody is simply watching, you know, the activities of each airline, which one is safer, which is pilot. Are you getting my point? Nigerian at, in 2012 were just tired of the military, you know, rule. They were tired for, because, you know, the military, there's no consistency in it. A military government takes over, you never can say whether it's going to last 20 days or one day or three months or six months, and they come, we start all over again. Mm -hmm. Losing people and you know people being killed or something like that. So Nigerians, for the first time, decided to vote for competence because that was the first time we had a presidential debate. People watched. I watched it, and you could see the articulation of Abiola in understanding the dynamics of the economy. The other man, Bashir Tofa, the presidential or the candidate of NRC, was Tamari. In fact, they asked him a question at the point that he didn't even know how much they were selling. 
a liter of petroleum because maybe because of his aristocratic background, he has never been to the filling station. He has drivers, plethora of drivers who go. So, but this man actually rose, I mean, rose from poverty. So he, has, so he was able to discuss and debate, debate with the Nigerian people and sway them. And people voted, defeating even Bashir Tofa in his own ward. So for me, that election was a watershed that should have altered the trajectory of our political journey. Because if we had followed in the suit, it means it's possible for two Christians, one from the north and one from the south, to contest for an election and win without anybody from the north saying no we will not allow christian christian to vote for us because they would have we would have said this president to say no abiola and tofa before. it has happened before so there will be nothing but now you look at it in 2015 they toyed with the idea of a muslim muslim ticket because they were trying to fashola was a very popular governor and people believed that his popularity at least would have aided you know apc and a combination of a buhari and Washington. and fashola Ashiwaju Ahmed Tinubu the Jagaban. Of course, you may like him, you may not like him. He's a political Trojan in Southwest. He's a Mahogany. He's a Caterpillar. <laughs> so <laughs> you may like him, you may not like him, but he's a force to be reckoned with. They toyed with the idea of matching him and Buhari because of his political clout. But when they flew the kite, look at how fast it was shut down. They they perish that thought. Don't even try it. They went to consult Baba Yabo and Baba Yabo said, perish it. That's why he came out to say no party should make the mistake of fielding a Muslim Muslim ticket. He was speaking to APC because they were flying the kite. Because he, it would have divided this country so sharply that you'll be shocked. If not for anything, because of the antecedent of Boko Haram, the attacking of churches, the killing of Christians and all the rest of them. So the line was already drawn between Christians and Muslims. And even in this election, you will see that it played out. Hmm. In the streets of Nigeria, people, there are people, enlightened people, who said, even Fanny Kayode at a point in time was in APC before. He left, he said what? They are trying to impose that APC was becoming a Muslim party. That's one of the reasons he gave. For living the, so even in the streets, it was already there that we, there are some Christians who don't even want to hear Buhari at all. In fact, I would prefer to be, I would prefer to, to to vote for a dead Christian presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. So, for me, that election in two, uh, June, 19, June, June, June 12, 12 would have been an incredible. That's why Nigerians never forget uh, forget Babangida. Mm -hmm. Babangida on a good day. If he had allowed that election to have stayed, would have been a statesman today, a, a political neophyte, mm -hmm. like Jonathan should not have dusted a Babangida in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because of Babangida's political clout. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an institution, he's an icon. Mm -hmm. he, he, has, he has followership, whether you like him or not, he has followership in this country. Mm -hmm. But he, the, the ordinary man on the street sent a signal and a message and it was so loud that he tried to come to, I mean, to hold political, you know, consultation meeting. In, in fact, people told him, don't come to the Southwest. Mm. They told him, point plan, Southwest is a no-go area. You can go to other zones, so, but don't bother. Because they can never forgive Babangida mm. for annulling what was the fierce and fairest election in the history of black Africa. Mm. This election, even though has been adjudged as free and fair, but I don't think it compares in any way to that of the John Tour. All right. Um, so much there. Uh, again, you mentioned in the course of your uh, discourse, you mentioned the issue of um, is, um, security. Uh, would you say that um, the issue of insecurity and the insurgency also uh, rubbed off on President Goodluck Jonathan for what we are seeing today? When you are a leader, when they call you a commander in chief, eh? You must, you must learn, you must have the ability to command with dignity. Your followership should not, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an irony. Let me tell you, the military, Nigerian military, when a government was dethroned in Syria alone, by Tijan, I think Tijan Kabar was dethroned by Koroma, Colonel Koroma or whatever they call him. Nigerian soldier under Obasanjo, went to Syria alone with our military men, penetrated Syria alone, went straight to their own presidential palace, flushed out the coup plotters, drove them out of their presidential palace, 
brought back their president, reinstalled him, guided him, trained more soldiers to defend their democracy before they were pulled out. Mm -hmm. They went to a whole nation, mm -hmm. drove the coup plotters out, out, brought in their president that they dethroned, restored him back, guided him until they have sufficient military backing from the Sierra Leone army, retrained them, and gave them control of the presidential palace before they re retreated back. Mm -hmm. That same army were face to face with a ragtag army. Mm -hmm. I can, there, there, are, there are so many speculations that there was a political calculation deliberately to allow insurgency to be a legitimate reason for shifting the election. Mm -hmm. So let's allow it to spread. It just, you know, when a house is on fire, just try to engage in activity as if you are trying to put out the fire. Mm -hmm. But don't just allow the fire to keep burning. Don't allow it to burn the whole house, but at least don't let, let everybody just think you are yeah, doing something. Does. So that it would have been a legitimate excuse. But towards the election, it became a burning issue mm -hmm. that, oh, you are unable to protect us, and therefore, we need somebody who can protect us. So, just some few weeks before the election, what we thought ordinarily should have been... Sorry, we have a call here. Sorry, let's finish this call. Hello? Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Who's speaking? My name is Dari. I'm coming from Akuche. Dari, how are you? Please go ahead on your, with your contribution. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, permit me to appreciate you. Thank and, you. Thank you. most especially to give me to this great commentator. Thank I mean, you so much. The guy is so factual, and um, it's, 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 it's on me. It's on me. I give it to him, and I would like um, you to actually tell us more about him, get us his profile, so that we can build I an mean, emotional relationship with him. But I give it to you, my TV. You are doing it beautifully well today. You have restored our hope, and God bless you. Mm. Thank, Thank you very you much, so Darius. We appreciate mm -hmm. Yes, please. You are making it. Comment. You were making an analogy. On security. On security. Yes. So, as a commander, immediately the Boko Haram, so what ordinarily they thought was going to be an advantage became a topical issue for the election that no, you are unable to secure us as a commander in chief. And the armies, you can imagine for the first time, armies were muting that we can't go to war with an empty hand. Mm. That you are telling us to go and face people with sophisticated weapons with an empty hand. These young men were tried and were sentenced. Sophisticated weapons. Yes. Mm. The governor of Borno State, immediately the Boko Haram issue started, told the whole nation that our army are no match for the Boko Haram. Even the president told him that it was wrong of him that he doesn't have facts at his disposal. Mm. They told him to shut up. But eventually, it became very obvious mm. that the army said they were ill-equipped and were now told that six weeks to the election, mm. we were able to get sufficient weapon mm. that was able to silence Boko Haram that for six years they we have been con handle. contending with. Mm. It was just, excuse me, a calculation. It was just a calculation. Mm. It was just a calculation that Obasanjo himself said it. You give it to him. General Obasanjo said it. That Jonathan should have been more decisive. Look, you don't play with people killing your own people. The first responsibility constitutionally of a government is protection of life and property. Let me tell you, in international law, once a, once a nation is unable to enforce... Sorry, hmm? we have another call here. Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, please. Who's speaking, sir? I can't go to enter to be peace. I'm Amek Chaniyu from each other. Welcome, Mr. Amek. Good day. Yes, please. Swear with you, sir. I'm, I'm very happy to be to enter this, to contribute I mean, to contribute to this uh, tournament today, sir. Ma. Please go ahead. Thank you. I know, I, know, I, I want Gwari to do one thing with Nigeria. For people to have the ordinary to live, Eat, eat, and then to see something get in this country. Eat. Even a healthy, particularly, if you can see this Lagos, uh, one, one thing only can help this in Lagos state. We will Lagos state and do transportation this Lagos. One, last month. Um, 
the government of this state to capture people, give the people I know you know program in this state of give it to see if it is easy to give and uh, uh, in the governor. I don't understand. They have not done the golden color. But it's not done. Hello? Mm. Yes. yes. You know, so like I was saying, concerning the insecurity, as a commander in chief, they can't be slotting your people and you say you are taking time, you are trying to understand what is going on, you are being slow so that people will not be killed. Let me tell you, let me tell you one scenario. When the Twin Towers in the US was attacked by the terrorists, they changed their policy that if any passenger flight or airplane is heading towards the city center, and has been warned several times to turn back, and it refuses. They have a standing, a standing order, as I speak with you today, to bring down that aircraft, regardless of the people inside. Mm -hmm. That's a nation that is responsible. Did you know what happened? After the terrorist attack in 2001 in the US, there was an overhaul of the entire security system that led to even additional almost about 150,000 new employment to guarantee internal security. Mm. It, it, that's a reactive and a pro, I mean a proactive government. That's all. We've just had a calamity. This calamity must never repeat itself. Repeat itself. Daily overhaul, but day in, day out. We have, so we have another call there. Hello. 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 Yes, please. Good evening. I am Samuel from Melbourne. Welcome, Samuel. Um, today is a milestone in the history of our nation, Nigeria. Uh, I just tune in now, and I really appreciate this eloquent studious man. He has proved that really Nigeria has there. The problem we have with God is with our leadership, which God has corrected for. So for the two ladies, MITV, and Mr. Zadini, I say God bless you. Bless you. Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you very much, sir. Whatever mm -hmm. to we'll have to yes. wrap up. Let, let me know. So repeatedly, these terrorists will attack one school, kill our young children. The president will sit down there. They will attack another school. They will sit down there. They kidnap our guests. They will sit down there. I'm asking them if his, if 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 those unity schools or those schools where those guests were captured from, the president's daughter was among them. Was among them. You would have seen. What would have been the reaction? They will bring in fighter jets from all parts of the world to come and rescue those girls. I, I, it's only, it's, it's, un, it's unpardonable mm -hmm. that they keep killing your people. If in civilized country, the president should have resigned. Mm -hmm. we, see, we are saying this now not, not because we hate the president, but because this is what is the norm in civilized societies. When you can't handle any situation, it's beyond your power. You tell those who employ you that, sorry, I want with all sense of humility to say, I, I seem not to have the capability to handle the challenge you have given to me. I'm throwing in the towel so that you can bring in a more competent person. Mm. You know, when somebody is not performing and you keep telling us he's the best president that Nigeria has ever produced, you're actually insulting the intelligence of Nigerians. And like I said most times, those people on the side of government, sometimes they assume that people on this other side are dummies and zombies mm. and stupid and we don't have a brain. But I tell you, there are millions of people here who are far more intelligent than majority of them there. Thank you very much, Barista. I made a verse there. Thank, you. Thank you for being here. Thank you well, for time factor, we might have to go wrap it up here. It appears we're not getting signals to link up with um, Abuja for the final results. But um, we'll keep our ears to the ground, and as soon as we're clear, we'll get back. At this point in time, we'd like to call it a date on this show. We said I don't want to do it again. Thank you for being a part of the show.